Kata Katoa. My name is Jackie, and there's two things that you should know about me. First of all, I'm incredibly indecisive, and secondly, I have a very strong superpower. I'll go into what my superpower is in a little bit. You see, throughout my life, I have been incredibly lucky. During my first couple years of uni, I was super passionate about the intersection of technology and all the possibilities that it could bring. So my friends and I decided to get together and share our passions with the students across Aotearoa. So together, we founded a not-for-profit to empower hundreds of students across the country to pursue careers in STEAM. STEAM being science, technology, engineering, arts, and math careers. We hosted multiple workshops and hackathons which students were encouraged to work together in diverse teams to solve a problem in their community that they were passionate about, or something that aligns with the World Health Organization's Sustainable Development Goals. And then students were also invited to present their Apple website prototype to an audience and a panel of judges. This provides students with an opportunity to experience what it would be like working in a STEAM career and understand the importance of working in diverse teams. The competitions that we ran saw a huge success and we were even featured in the local newspapers. After finishing university, I had a privilege of working on my dream job at Microsoft and traveled across to various countries for work, including the US, Australia, Taiwan, and Malaysia. I got to work with some of the most incredible people and passionate teams to design tech programs and competitions across Australia and New Zealand. These programs were aimed to address the global workforce skills gap by bridging the gap between higher education and the workforce. From the outside, things would have looked pretty good. I had an awesome job. I got to lead teams that genuinely made an impact and not to mention the free international travel and perks that comes along with working in a tech giant. My life was supposed to be sorted. But then you see, I have this really powerful superpower. And this superpower is mind control. I have the ability to control my own mind and completely convince myself that even though I've had the successes that I've had, it all means nothing. I'm a fraud, I should not be here, and I'm completely underqualified and out of my depth. In fact, a study showed that up to 82% of the world's population has the superpower too. Have you ever felt nervous, anxious, or ever felt like you're a fraud? That maybe you shouldn't be hired or got the promotion that you got? Or that maybe you were hired by mistake and it was pure luck? Or maybe the day that the interviewer was running the interviews, they accidentally put your CV into the wrong pile and you shouldn't actually be here? Or maybe you're in a relationship and you're worried that one day you're gonna wake up to that person next to you and they're gonna look at you in the eye and ask you, why are you even here? Well, welcome to the club. There's this secret club that many elite members of society are self-admitted members for. This includes Nobel Prize winners, Albert Einstein, and tennis icon, Serena Williams, and civil rights activist, Maya Angelou. And unfortunately, me too. Albert Einstein, one of the world's greatest physicists of all time, said that I feel compelled to think of myself as an involuntary swindler. Maya Angelou, award-winning author and poet, said that I've written 11 books, but each time I think that, uh oh, they're gonna find out now. And I can tell you that there's me here standing in front of you today, and I can tell you that my biggest fear right now is a big man with black rim glasses and a clipboard coming up and trying to wave me off stage saying, chop chop, your time is up, you're not supposed to be here, get back in your own lane. So what is imposter syndrome? By now, you might have guessed it. Imposter syndrome is the constant feeling of self-doubt and inadequacy. You worry that one day you will be found out and kicked out of the role or position that you're in. This big and evil syndrome can affect anyone, regardless of your job, your social status, or your long list of achievements. 
it isn't a matter of low self-esteem or a lack of confidence. But however, if you are a female or from a minority population, unfortunately, you are more likely to experience imposter syndrome. Fortunately, over the years, I've had some fantastic mentors who have taught me some very useful ways of coping with it. So today, I'd like to share some of my diamonds that I've learned so far with you. Firstly, imposter syndrome could actually be a good thing. It means that you are aware of your own capabilities and where your limits may lie. For example, if you're not an expert in psychology, but have to give a TED talk, a presentation on the topic that you're not a genius in, then you know that you should probably consider doing some research or maybe reaching out to that PhD friend or researcher of yours who is an expert in psychology to help you check your script out. I also thought that I'll also include one of my most favorite pie diagrams here. So in, in the green, you can see that people who get imposter syndrome, the orange, other people who get imposter syndrome, and the blue, literally anyone else who gets imposter syndrome. So if you can take anything away from this, I want you to remember that imposter syndrome is completely normal and many people experience it too. Secondly, after recognizing that you have imposter syndrome, I would like to encourage you to share your feelings. Have an open dialogue with a friend, colleague, or even a work mentor. It's good to seek support when you need it. You'd be surprised to find how many people actually experience the same nervous or anxious feelings as you. Working in tech, oftentimes I found myself to either be the youngest or only female in the room. When leading teams, I oftentimes had to manage people who were a lot older than myself. And I definitely felt like an imposter when discussing performance reviews because I was merely still trying to figure myself out too. I found out that by sharing my experiences with my mentor, she shared that she too felt like an imposter regardless of her age and experience. You shouldn't need to harbor all these negative thoughts alone. You should be able to work in a place for you to safely express how you feel and reach out if you need support. And if in the odd occasion, your work is not supportive of your needs, then maybe it's time you considered freshening up your CV. My third point is to ensure that you create a good support system. Before I joined Microsoft, my background was actually in health sciences. In many scenarios, I found myself feeling out of place in a tech industry. It took a lot of guts for me to share how I was feeling with my manager, and she introduced me to my work support system. I was very lucky to find people who were in a similar boat as me, and we learned a lot of each other. And my fourth point is to always keep learning and be authentic. Feel like an imposter because you feel underqualified and do some research. It's good for you to always keep learning and asking questions. And no matter what you do, I can almost guarantee that you cannot mess up as badly as I did. So many years ago, I was invited to um, a recruiting conference at one of the big four accounting firms. I was in a large, beautiful room that overlooked the ocean. I think we we're on the 30th floor. And the whole room of this conference was filled with really smart looking people with professional dresses and suits. And young and naive me thought that they were a tech firm. And if you work in tech, you know that the acceptable dress code is you know, jeans and a hoodie. And man, did I feel like the biggest imposter in the room? And quite frankly, I was dressed like one. But luckily, there was still a happy ending and we managed to lock in the deal. Now, I'm not encouraging you to rock up to an interview underdressed, but I do encourage you to be authentic and keep learning. And maybe consider doing some research in the company before applying and rocking up to their interview. Lastly, Imposter syndrome oftentimes stems from feeling like you do not deserve the status or the success that you've had. But in reality, I can almost guarantee that you do. You've worked really hard for that role, but sometimes 
in that moment, we forget all the hard work that we've done to put ourselves in the place that we are today. So I encourage you to keep a record of all your successes and whenever you need a little reminder of the work and effort and all the achievements you've had and all the hard work, I, I want you to refer to that little book. So once again, if everything I've been saying here today goes in one ear and out the other, please just remember these five diamonds. Number one, know your limits. Two, share your feelings. Three, create a support system. Four, be authentic and always keep learning. And five, record your successes. And as always, be kind to yourself, celebrate your small wins, and know that for every 10 people sitting in the room with you here today, eight people would be feeling like a fraud. But now you know the secret of using this as your superpower. And I've always wanted to say this, but thank you for coming to my TEDx talk.